Welcome back to the show. I'm Kachi Ofia. You're still watching Arise 360. So the opening film. Whoa, it was, it was intense. This year's Afro Festival showcased over 150 films from Africa and the diaspora alongside industry panels, networking events, but nothing has really, really hit me, I would say, quite like the festival kicking off with the opening film, Headless. Now, it follows the gritty journey of a Nigerian filmmaker um, embodying you know, this ideology of just wanting to make it in, in this creative industry, of course, from that dream, things just go south. And we have the trailer for you to enjoy. It's one movie that I would say embodies Afrif's mission to blend local narratives with a global appeal. Take a look. The rest of your life in prison. Or you can go right do what I say and then come out to riches and luxury. It appears you made your choice. He went after the lawyer and until they find him. I'm trying, I'm trying, ma. You like what you see? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's why you killed her. I did not kill her. I didn't have to help her end up in your car. So they're gonna punish you and your stupid film market. just saying that if I was Gideon Okeke's sister or mom, I would have called him and said, today is the day that you quit. So I dropped my phone outside. <laughs> I could have shown you now, my uncles, my aunties, everyone is like, uh, they call me Eche. Mm -hmm. I'm Eche Zona. <laughs> so I go, Eche, please stop these stunts. <laughs> We see you, you're good enough. Let us drink water and drop a cup. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly speaking, that was that was crazy. Yeah. That that yeah. was that was let's talk about let's first of all, great to have every single one of you here. Uzo Amaka, uh, Badge, Gideon, of course, you three were in this film headless. Now people watching haven't seen the film, so of course we can't give out any spoilers until it's officially out. But I want to just talk about the creative process behind it. Now, everyone I feel had to take on a persona that was far away from who they are naturally, right. including yourself, you know. You had to be this joker kind of guy. Hey, for real? Yeah, yeah, I would say that's, that's what your that. character yeah. kind of gave me, the Actually, vibe. He gave this... I didn't know that was the vibe I was giving. That's honestly. the vibe I got. It was kind of like this very sinister uh, yeah, person. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a sinister You know, character. incredibly yeah. sinister. Very like, resentful, you know? very vengeful, yeah. Exactly. I mean, yeah. your character gave me this, like, like an achiever, like somebody who has to... Very driven. You're very driven. You have mm. to do what you need to do. But at the same time, you're trying to balance that with your heart. Mm. The fact that you are a human being, you know? So it was giving me a lot of different... And you, on the other hand, I just felt bad for you, my brother. <laughs> I was like, this man is dealing with a lot. Like, he's dealing with a lot. And again, guess what? That is every creative because we might not have the same story that you had, but in some way, there's almost always something that jumps in your path you know, whenever you want to get something that you want. So I want to talk about how you all got into your respective roles. I'm going to begin with you, okay. Abash. How did you get into your character for Headless? Uh, I guess I'll have to give Michael, he's the writer and director of the film, mm -hmm. kudos for that. Uh, after the script, he sent me pretty much the most detailed, longest character Bible I've ever seen. Like, I, I had to call him back, like, you, you want, like, everything? <laughs> you, everything. Oh, okay, okay, I just wanted to confirm. Yeah, and I went back, because he had charts, he had tables, it was, it was very, very detailed to how he walks, how he, it was, it was very detailed. Mm -hmm. So, when you have that much material to work with, it really helps you do your work, in, mm -hmm. in short, because now your rehearsal is very, very succinct, it's very specific on what you're supposed to do. And then it was always available to have conversations. Like, we worked on the character till the day of the shoot. No. Till a couple of hours before shooting, you still brought another thing, like, I want you to add, add this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so it was, it was, there was a lot of work put into, into the barrister that ended up really working well for me. You know? Yeah, you became the barrister. Uzumaka, what about your character? I don't want to say too much about her, but there was a lot of emotional and physical stuff. All I know, if we went into your backstory, I feel like your backstory probably had a lot of 
drama at home. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, that was fueling your drive because some, something has to push that level of. So talk to me about her. Again, it's the, it's the director, I would mm -hmm. say. Um, he's very passionate and just knows exactly what he wants to do. And when you have a director like that, then it's easy to um, get into your character and know who your character is because he's there to talk you through it. He knows this character because he wrote the character. Mm -hmm. But you are there also to bring what you see in the character, haven't read the script. Um, I read the script and I connected with Jane, with uh, Inspector Jane, <laughs> Goff one. I, I connected with her on the level of wanting justice. Um, I personally, I'm a fan of getting justice. I love uh, equality. Mm -hmm. I love. Um, I love people paying for their crimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <As> they should. <laughs> they should. I, mm -hmm. I really like. Yeah, we live in a world that does that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. But internally, personally, I hope I want that to happen. I wish that would happen. And so that wish, I got to live it out mm -hmm. through um, Jane Goffin. And the director, like he said, gave me like the backstory of this character, what she'd been through, what drives her, what her driving forces, what's what's making her really interested in this case, why she wants, she wants justice the way that she does. Um, and so we had loads and loads of conversations about, about her. Um, I spoke to him about what I wanted for the character um, and, and it, was, it was very much a collaboration. And so um, being on set and seeing all of that come to fruition was just amazing. Yeah, yes. and you guys, you guys, I feel like you were such a nice person to his character though. Yes. Talk to me about getting into your character he was funny, but he was going through a lot. How you maintain that much level of humor is incredible in that type of situation. Right. Um, the humor was serious. Mm -hmm. um, what was playing out was serious mm -hmm. to him, um, but it plays out to the audience as, as funny. As funny. Um, I started preparing from the day I, I got the script, of course. Um, part of my preparation also um, would be hinged on the director's confidence uh, in my work or mm -hmm. in my ability to, to, to do what the script said. Um, but I also credit uh, my process from uh, having played 10 years in television. Um, so I like to say that um, the best preparation is to not prepare mm. if, as much as you are prepared. Because um, drama school would say if you have, if you have a, 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 a calculated preparation, then you have calculated and a calculated output. Mm -hmm. see, see your hands? See your hands? Yeah. You're not aggregating, you're not thinking about it. You're just doing that. Yeah. You're breathing. You, you, you did that. You yeah. didn't you just you just did that. Mm -hmm. Right? So I like my character. I like to go into going to engaging my characters and having them be light on or rather I be light on my feet. Mm -hmm. So that the character becomes fluid. Mm -hmm. I'm not so over prepared on paper, but I'm prepared in my mind. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what I want to do, mm -hmm. but I'm not gonna put it down. Mm. You know, because that then get, make, makes the character rigid and not so not as fluid. Because imagine a case of that jump mm. that you saw. If I was prepared for the jump the night before, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't wake up the morning to do the jump. Mm -hmm. So that's why, that's why I say uh, prepare not to prepare, but you are prepared. Okay. <laughs> if that makes any sense. <laughs> no, but, but wait, um, wait. I think, if anything, <clears throat> that speaks to discipline. Because I've spoken to a lot of actors and every single person, I mean, there are a few that I remember, you know, that I know every single person has something that they do before, right. okay. you know? So perhaps that is yours, right. preparing to not prepare to be prepared. Because, you know, um, in, see what your hands are doing. Mm -hmm. This is life. You didn't, this you're, life. Not, you're not calculating how you're going to do it. No. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. um, but you're doing it, mm -hmm. right? So um, if I prepare to do that that way, it's calculated. So you're just becoming the character. Let the guy just be, so it's fluid. Mm. That what way is, I'm not present. What is your own, I would say, method to the madness of acting? I like to be prepared. Mm -hmm. um, I like to study my script, know exactly who this character is find ways, find char characteristics about this character, mm -hmm. this person, um, who they are, but then also just keep an open mind. So, okay. so I'm, I'm on set and I'm ready because the person you're playing with can give you something that's not on this script. And so because you're open-minded, you're not strict about, oh, this is what we've rehearsed and this is what I've prepared and this is it. 
Yeah, so you're open and so you receive that. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you're having a dialogue and the dialogue on the, on the paper is, um, comp wh where did you go to? And the response is, I went to school. And the person then says, okay, but, but like, so this is what you've prepared, right? And then you get on set and the person says, so why did you come late? You have to, because you know where the character is coming from, you know that this, this character is late to the event. Right. And so you have a response. You don't then go, oh my goodness, that's not on the that script. That was a lie. Yeah. You know? Does that happen though? <laughs> yes, like, it oh, happens. Director, they didn't say what was on the paper. Yeah, yeah, it happens. <laughs> yes. Where it's like, oh, and you know, somebody starts looking around like, oh, that's not what we read, uh, you know? But then, so I like being, so it means that you're listening. It means that you're in the moment. You're paying attention to your scene partner. You're there, you know, and that's how I like to work. Really. Now, Bash, for you, I would, I would love for you to also speak on your method to the madness, but specify to this particular character, because like I said, it was a sinister one. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, mine is, is really determined by the character I'm playing. It's, mm -hmm. There's no specific way I do it. Mm -hmm. The character determines how I prepare. Like this one, he's so far from me, even from the way he walks, he's so, this one, I already knew I'll have to do like a ton of rehearsals. Mm -hmm. So we're just rehearsing, rehearsing the walk, rehearsing how he moves, how he talks. Because uh, we always have to carry this, um, he likes to, when he's with someone that is beneath him, like he likes to look like the one that is above, like he has everything in control, mm -hmm. like he's, but in actuality he's, you know those people that, the proximity to power thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, big time thing, yeah, that's how he is actually. Mm -hmm. So I have to make sure I show that, depending on who I'm talking to in the scene and stuff like that. So rehearsals, rehearsals, but when I now finally got to meet them and we got to read together, the rehearsals helped, because that one has kind of like set the stage for, yeah. it doesn't matter where, where you're bringing it, I'm very ready, I'm, I know exactly who this guy is. So when, no matter what you are doing, it's like we are just talking as normal mm -hmm. human beings because I'm already very much aware of who I am. Now I just want to know who you are and what, what are we doing here? What are we talking about? What are mm -hmm. we trying to get to get to get done? Stuff. Oh, I like that. I really, really do. And I think listening to you, you, you three speak, I can see how everything individually. You guys did your own thing, but it came together to tell like a perfect story and a perfect picture. Now we are in festival week, obviously, and you know, I know there was a meet and greet yesterday that a couple of people attended. Now, if there's one thing last year, interestingly, the one thing that I would say AFRIF really pushed was collaboration over competition. And it's interesting because we see a lot of that happening this year, where a lot of the films that are showing are films that are built off collaborations. But looking at the year that we've had, AFRIF last year to AFRIF this year, how would you say we fared in terms of partnering? And I would say collaboration, not even just in production, but even in acting. How's our teamwork? You guys are the actors. You're in the industry, so you can speak better on this. So how would you say our collaboration has fared over competition, which is one of the major things that AFRIF last year sought to fight against. I'm gonna start with you, Gideon. Well, uh, it's presented the actor with uh, golden opportunities to perform. Um, it's not about Mr. A, it's not about Mr. B, it's about mm -hmm. the story, mm -hmm. it's about the project. You know, uh, so companies, uh, individuals coming together to collaborate, uh, put their monies together, um, just so that we, for the good of this story we're trying to tell and Lucky for the actor who gets the part. Mm. Right, what about you, Zamaka? <laughs> um, I think that for, for me personally, um, as an actor, I've found that collaboration also means stepping away from, the, from acting as mm. well. It's not just collaborating in the acting context. Um, I've also collaborated with a friend of mine as the second AD. <laughs> so that is also just like contributing one mm -hmm. way or another to the story, to, mm -hmm. to what it is, the collective good. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think that collaboration moves any industry forward. Um, you know, in, in being an indie, I mean, it's, it's great to be individualistic in, in some aspects, mm -hmm. depending on the context, but if we plan on growing um, as a whole, coming together to tell bigger stories, to tell better stories. Yeah. If, if two studios are, are better off together to be able to get funding for this story, then why not come together and, 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 do, get, it, right? and do it, you I know? Agree. So yes, yes to collaboration. Yeah, what about you, Badge? Oh, it's, it's, it's a brilliant idea, because most of the time, all you need is just the space for you to meet these people and have a conversation. Because yes. at the end of the day, you're pretty much going for the exact same thing. Yes. You want to make a great film. Yes. That's really the goal, 99% of the time. It's just where can you get that space where you two can just sit down and just 
literally just have a conversation. That's pretty much what you're doing. And then from the conversation, you then start talking about funding and what kind of story and so on and so forth. Yeah. And that's something that Free always does. He always presents, if it's not the events, if it's not the movies, if it's not the after parties, it's, oh. <laughs> he always, <laughs> nice he, always creates, <laughs> he always creates space for different people from different parts of the world to, to meet and have a conversation. And that's always a good thing. Networking. Networking, I think that's the key word. I feel like yeah, there's been, yeah. this entire weekend, I would say since Saturday, mm -hmm. from the Netflix gig, sliding into Afro, mm -hmm. it's just been network, network, network. Yes. But Gideon Zomaka, Bash, thank you three so much. I cannot wait for the world world to see Headless. Same I feel here, like they're going to go back to this interview and be like, ah, that's why <laughs> she said this and that's why he said that. Yeah. Now it's making more sense. I cannot wait for the world to see it and we'll be patient because I think it's one of those type of films that we can definitely be patient for. So You've thank you. Film, right? Are you joking? One word, right? <laughs> one word for the film? Yeah. I told you. The film it's to hard your to camera, do. to your camera. Okay, it's hard to say it in one word. I would, one can word. I use one in one? Whatever. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I would say after watching Headless, it was a movie that made me incredibly happy, but there was this satisfying feeling of discontent. Discontent in the sense that as... No spoilers. Okay. Go for it, go for it, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Okay, no. Wait, I know. You see, that can be television presenter. Yeah, I used to worry, talk. No. But the point is, it's a satisfying sense because it is not what you expect. Yes. And it is... So satisfying. It's soothing. It's like, ah, you know, like trauma from like what you're used to <laughs> is like just slapped away. It's like, this is not what I expected, but you know what? This is satisfying. Yeah. So yeah, it's a fantastic film. And the, the, the title is so spot on. But yeah. guess what? It doesn't hit you until you watch it. So <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> because if I start, I will take the beginning and end of the film. Yeah. yeah. So thank you guys so much for joining me on the show. Yeah.